This is the Copper Crab Podcast. <laughs> hey, all you kittens and cubs. What's going on? I'm Naveen Copperweiss. I'm Chaney Crab, your favorite duo in the podcasting slash death metal game. We're probably the number one death metal <laughs> du- podcast duo. I mean, right? Right. Same you, same. you gotta be number one at that. I mean, you... It's hard to not be number one when you're the only one. <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. Good to go. So how are you guys doing? How's Corona treating you? Yeah, how's... The, the quarantine? Everyone's quarantined these yeah. days. Yeah, I know. I personally have been fine with it. I don't know if that's disrespectful to say, but I've been... I welcome the quarantine. Well, the quarantine is like a vacation for a certain amount of time, and then... Yeah. Maybe it'll get old. What has gotten old to me is not being able to go to the gym. Mm. That drives yeah. me nuts. Yeah. Yeah. We do have like workout stuff at our house and everything, but I like to go to the sauna. True. We don't have a sauna. We do not have a sauna. Maybe I could put one in the van. <laughs> I was thinking your studio, because the way that our heating system works, the heater is in Naveen's studio. Our yeah. other heater, we're like in the process of getting it fixed. That's in the house, not the van, by the way. Yeah, in the van. Or in the house. Not I mean, the in van. the house. <laughs> so the heater is <clears throat> in Naveen's studio, and you can shut the door in there and turn the heater on, and it'll just get like, it'll fucking crank up high. Yeah. So I was thinking we just sit in there, make it into a sweat lodge. Okay. There's my sauna. Hot Let's yoga. Move out for the drums everyone. and everything. Yeah, would it warp? It would probably warp all the instruments in there. It's know. not good for the guitars, honestly. Like my guitar is always out of tune. Really, my guitar stays yeah, in my nice cold studio. Yeah, because the weather is constantly studio. going cold, hot, cold, hot. It's like extreme, you know. So it's yeah, bad. That probably is bad. But I'm not a pro guitar player, so I don't care. Uh, I don't know. You're, oh, mar- I you're, ha- market- I I'm- you're marketing yourself a little differently these days. To I guess me. I came back out of retirement, dude. You did. I'm- not that I was retired, but he's you know, shredding the guitar. I did a little bit of shredding, dude. You did a little and bit. I think I guess we talked about it last week. Announced the song, yeah. Right? But now we've actually song's been out for a week. Mm-hmm. So that's been a a pro about coronavirus. We've had time to work on music a lot more time. Along with ev- I think probably every other <clears throat> musician out there is working yeah. on something right now. I mean, I guess if you're really. Uh, if, you're, if you don't have enough money to pay your bills, then you don't have time probably to sit around and make metal. But if you can make it on part time or wherever you're at, like what we're doing, we're 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 okay. We're still making enough part time to I think pay for all of our bills and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we're just left with a bunch of extra time. And for me, I mean, this has been revolutionary for me. Seriously, yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, mm-hmm. like I've. Uh, completely torn apart the van. Yeah. You know, haven't told you about this in a while, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've... I think I talked about it on a... Yeah, on the... I, I talked about it on the episode where I was trying to get Cheney to live in a van with me. Mm-hmm. Well, I've started... I've continued on that plan, and I've taken all the benches out, taken all the... Everything out of the van, and I'm redoing it with wood panels and shit. It's going to be super nice in there. Yeah, I think it's going to be really cool. It's going to be for vacationing, not for living. Yeah. What's the difference? Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yesterday we had some friends ca- come over and uh the man friend was telling his lady friend about, "Oh yeah, Naveen and Chain are going to live in a van and like, and I'm just like, "No. This is this yeah, is not know. happening." Yeah, I guess I told him that <clears throat> I must have told him that that's what I was going to do. Which is funny because <laughs> we live in a van so much that it's funny that I'm even saying anything about like I'm never I'm not going to live yeah. in a van. Yeah. But well, when we go on tour next, I'm <clears throat> saying it's going to be a lot better. It'll Everyone's be a gonna lot be better. Knocking yeah. on the door, trying to hang out in there. Seriously. I'm personally just kind of trying to live in a house for a while because we spent so long in a small space, yeah. and now it's like I'm not I'm not ready to go back to an even yeah. smaller space. I, I will vacation yeah. in the van. Let's, but, get, let's have the best of both worlds. We got a fucking sick van. We live in yeah, a, a cool house. house. I mean, you have to keep in mind, we lived in a 500 square foot space with each other for 
seven years. I'm really was, stoked to have my own area. I think it might be because our house is a thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if it was like 350. God, whatever it was. We, I mean, we <clears> did <throat> fine. You don't. The thing about like a rat in a cage is that they never know the rest of the world, right? Yeah. Totally. They never know that the rest of the world is out there. So we were like two rats in a cage, and we went from our ca from our barn cage to our van cage, and we never knew anything bigger. Yeah. Until we got this true cool house, and now I'm like set free. I know, and which is probably most people would consider this to be a really small house. Yeah, it's a fairly small house for sure. I mean, it's three bedrooms, but it's like there's only one bathroom. It's it's a smaller house. For me, I mean, it's every, everything I'd ever need. Me I mean, too. We have me. a huge yard, though, yeah. so there's that, and which is pretty fucking hard to come by to in park. California. We have two trailers. We do have, we have two a trailers. Defunct trailer and a new trailer. Oh uh, shit! I gotta fucking register that trailer. Oh, our new trailer. Yeah. So, reminder. You're supposed to register it, right? I don't if know you, how this stuff it, works. I can't remember. I don't know. Fuck. We did get a new trailer. That's the one thing that we got for this upcoming tour that got canceled, the right. Allegiant tour. Yep. We took money out of our savings to buy it. You know, I really got to give so. it up to Dave Ramsey because uh. he's the reason why we are having a good time Seriously. in this coronavirus Seriously. shutdown. Because if it wasn't for you completely obsessing with Dave Ramsey last year, we would not have <clears throat> money saved. We'd be fucked. We would be totally fucked. But I think with the with our part time work and doing all of our little side hustles and stuff, I I think we're gonna still be able to pull through without having to drain our little savings account. Yeah, I so. mean, I feel very very fortunate <clears throat> in times like these that my job yeah. is uh, my job is considered an essential job, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to be out of work because it's in the medical field but and my other job somehow <clears throat> my kind of side gig where i go around and take pictures of houses has only yeah. picked up since coronavirus started so oh. i feel very fortunate for that yep. but i also recognize that there are a ton of people out there who don't work in the same field your job has seen a decrease in oh, yeah. i mean i haven't but i haven't been loving it yeah I'm you love it. life mm -hmm. i yeah I want to just do hobbies all the time. Totally. That's what kind of a guy I am. But, I know this. Uh, so it's been, it's been great in that. I, I've honestly needed a break. You know, I really did. I was starting to get worn out. And I think <clears throat> this coronavirus for both of us has been a real look into how we actually want uh, life to be. Like what we yeah. actually want is yeah. to be sit like doing music all the time. <clears throat> what we Just actually whatever, want is yeah. for you to be able to like rip apart the van on a whim and and Super that's fun. one thing that I think is really cool about this whole thing is that it's almost like watching all of these things that we depended on get stripped away touring um, the convenience of being able to mm -hmm. play live shows in front of anyone period and I make know. money off of that yeah. and if you're fam familiar with the music industry those are the ways we make money shows merch that's really the big source of income for us. Yeah, so, that was the first thing to kind of get axed. Yeah, like. yeah, it was the first thing to get axed. It's uh, public gathering. Public gatherings, was, travel, travel was the yeah. first thing, and then the public gatherings. So we were fucked right from the beginning. But it's been cool to see the way that musicians are adapting <clears throat> to this situation because you'll see yeah. like a band like Code Orange did a, a really cool live stream. That reminded me of going to not a show, but a concert. Mm. Uh, like the theatrical parts of it. I, I don't think you watched it. It was. Ca it's called Last Ones Left, if any of you guys want to check it out. Um, uh, it's on YouTube. But they went into a venue, they live streamed their set, and they played like uh, music video clips in between <clears throat> parts as if it... You know, when yeah. you go to a concert... I'll use like Ozzy Osbourne as as an example. When I went to see Ozzy live before the show, there's a whole like acted out skit to introduce Ozzy onto the stage that they project onto, a, you know, oh, a, okay. a sheet, and then so they'll like drop they, the sheet. Were they actually projecting the videos onto some sort of screen live, or was it like just? 
cl- coming onto the computer screen. For yeah, the there viewer. there was that, and then they had like a projector live that wasn't. We got to do that, man. Yeah. You know what I need to figure out how to do? Actually, I know how to do it. But uh, <laughs> so we got that GoPro Max, right? Yeah. And we did a little live stream the other night. I don't know if any of you guys tuned in. Yeah. But I think I I, I hit the wrong checked off the wrong box or something and like the video went away after the i usually like to leave it there yeah for people to re-watch and then they my dad comments yeah he did he by thinks the way. it's live he did <clears throat> dude every time we cut one of those videos i'm just waiting for your dad to comment and ask us questions like three days later as yeah. if he's watching but the after live the stream video. it was freaking gone and I was like, damn it. Yeah, I think there's something you can either choose to not leave it or to leave it. I don't really know. But, but you can stream with this really sick camera that I'm in love with. And uh, so what I need to figure out how to do, mm-hmm. and I think I know a way to do it, but get it so I can use the mixer into the camera. Oh, yeah. And then we could do a, a legit live stream and it would sound really good. Which would be really cool. We should do that. Yeah, we've we got all the means. We need to do that like tomorrow. Yeah, seriously. Mm-hmm. Should we do it tomorrow? We could. That's what I'm loving about this virus thing. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can just kind of do whatever you want. We that's what I've that been tomorrow. like. So I, <clears throat> I was listening to a bunch of metal and stuff, and I was listening to some older shit that I'm into. I was listening to Origin, mm-hmm. their first EP, and uh, which, if you guys haven't checked out Naveen's <clears throat> Origin cover that he. So on a whim, I'm like, I'm going to fucking do an origin cover, dude. Yeah. You know, and I would have never done that. Mm-hmm. I would have never done that because my I've been spending so much time at work and, you know, I got to do this and that and like everything's so regimented. I was just, honestly, I needed, I mean, I wish it didn't have to be a pandemic for me to get a break, but, right. well, you know, I maybe I should have just, maybe I should just take more of a, take more time to do what I want in my life yeah, know? and not be so concerned with making money and blah, blah, blah. It is it is eye opening in that way. Yeah. That a lot of the time we get caught up in life's in life period. Caught up. And life dude. moves really quickly and when you work a lot it's easy to like I don't want to say make excuses as if you're a lazy person or anyone's a lazy person, but dude, if you work a 12 hour day you You drive two hours there you work eight hours you drive two hours back when you get home you want to like netflix and chill that's what you want to do so having all of this free time is really inspiring seriously it's really inspiring to just get a like wake up in the morning and think about well what do i want to do today and then i wrote a a bunch of riffs on guitar over the weekend and I haven't really sat down and wrote a riff in probably two or three years. Yeah, that's really cool. That's like really cool that you're doing that. And it's like, it's just inspiring to have a bunch of free time when you're a creative person. Yeah. And And I I don't know what it is because obviously you could do this at any time, but for some reason, since there's been this kind of shift in the world, Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's okay for me to do whatever I want. I absolutely You, you know agree. what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, I think <clears throat> that it, it's like a mixture of the I feel okay staying home. Yeah. Because the, I do have like a sense of FOMO, the fear of <laughs> yeah. missing out. And it's like if I'm home and I know that a bunch of people are out doing something and I kind of want to do that thing as well, I like there there is some kind of anxiety if I'm not there or if I'm not doing something I think I should be doing. Totally. And this is the first time, honestly, in life that no one's doing shit. We, we've been given... No, it's our duty to stay home and not yeah. do anything. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm loving I'm, I'm loving. Lo- I'm loving it, I'm loving too, it. I have to I'm be gonna honest. I'm going to keep going with it. However, I do over. recognize that not everyone I, I loves yeah. it. And I do recognize, recognize that are, there are a ton of people who are losing money over this, who are out of work. I mean, we've lost money. We've lost money. I've lost a ton of money over it. And, yeah, my heart does go out to people who don't know how they're going to make it through this situation. Yeah. So... But that's another reason why I want that van. Yeah. Because if it's going to be fallout and everything's fucked, I'll just be like, let's oh, get out of here. Oh, fallout? I thought you meant like autumn outside. No, fallout. If out. it's going to be fall out. <laughs> no, if it's the fallout, dude, and it's <laughs> collapse, 
I'll be like, come on, babe. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Getting in that van and going to South America and hiding. Whatever, dude. I don't know. Yeah, go to some, go to the desert. Yeah. That's my plan. Because mm-hmm. there's going to be power in there eventually. That's the expensive thing, getting the solar power. <laughs> yeah. I think we should spend I'm the money on it. I'm just obsessed with this van. Like, you have no, I, like, it's, I get obsessed with things. Yeah, you do. Fuck, man. This well, van Well, yesterday thing. you were saying that you're going to have it done by Sunday. And um, I'm if you can do have... that, that would be amazing. That okay, would really be, be a feat. Yeah, it's not going to be totally done by Sunday because I've been thinking about that claim. And I don't yeah. want it to be janky. You know? I don't either. Uh, I want to have, like, the bed and uh, I want to have it, like, framed out and have, like, the wood on the walls. And maybe the wall, the floor. Well, I'll have the sub floor. Okay. So I'm thinking the sub, the materials that I bought. So I bought uh, stuff for the f- insulate. I bought insulation mm-hmm. and I bought some really thin plywood that's going to go on the floor. And then we're going to put those wood tiles on top of it. Yeah. So I'm thinking do that and do the panels on the walls. I think that could be done by Sunday. Totally. I agree with you. And then I got to get the LEDs. The strips that I'm going to put up top, dude. Because that's what you got to have. If you're looking at these things on Instagram. Because I'm are really th- just doing it for one sick Instagram photo. That's are you going to have it be the LED, the kind of LEDs that uh, Sam got you for Christmas that you can like turn yeah. up? And- so they have like he got Sam me. Is, Sam is Naveen's sister's fiance, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just it some is. random. <laughs> he got me the hue. Phillips hue yeah which is real sick well we have all like all of the lights in our house are on hue yeah that's the high-tech shit that we're so it connects to the internet and then you can control it on your phone yeah that's way sick and I and I actually have that strip that he got me on the floor behind my drums right so if you're seen in my latest videos so yeah I did I did hold on let's go back to the origin thing I cut an origin video it's sick as fuck. In, in the background. And he did the guitars on it as yeah. well. Some people are, some people have been commenting. I reposted it and they're like, should have left the vocals in. And I'm like, what? This this dude went and tracked his own guitars. Yeah, I don't have what the do you want him to be? A vocalist too? Tracks. Jesus. Yeah. You're asking too much. But it was really fun. So <clears throat> maybe we'll put the link in the description or something like that. Maybe we'll. Give me a little shout we out. We might. Give me a little shout out. We'll think about it. So. In the background of my drum videos, you can see this little light strip I put on the floor. <clears throat> Damn it. I think I'm getting coronavirus. <laughs> Six feet back. Six feet back, motherfucker. So, <laughs> Don't come near me. What was I fucking talking about? <laughs> you were talking about that cool light okay. strip that Sam got you. So that's all connected to the internet. And that one is real sick. It's it's awesome. Yeah. But I, we, don't need one, we don't need it to connect to a Wi-Fi. So I've been looking on... Uh, Amazon and they have similar light strips to those ones but they don't connect to the internet and it just has a little remote Ah, and they're super cheap Ah, yeah. so I'm going to get a couple of those and then I found these really sick I just searched for this took, a, this took some doing mm-hmm. to try to find this stuff but I searched for LED light strip channel and they have this little aluminum channel that has like frosted plastic and you can put the light strip in it and then mount it up on the side. Oh, very cool. <clears throat> and it looks freaking so clean. Yeah. And then we'll have just a little remote that I can just pin to the door. Very cool. Yeah, so I'm you, excited about this. So you can change the colors and shit. Dude, on tour everyone's going to be hanging in there. I know. It'll be oh, this be the so smoke box. Oh, we can open the doors and maybe have like a little grill. And I'm just like, what up, parties over here, yeah, dude? And everyone's yeah. like, what? These guys are sick. Look at this. What would also be cool is if we had like a rollout canopy. <clears throat> because okay, we then we when we that. go to, we because our, our real plan here, we haven't, well, this is Naveen's idea for the record, not mine, but you, but you, can take you weren't right thinking here. as far as going on tour. Like you didn't give a fuck about the tour part. No. So what we really no. want to do is go to like Joshua Tree and things like that. We live in California. There are a ton of beautiful state parks and things to see here. So we want to travel up and down California, the West Coast, maybe further out, Utah, Idaho. It would be awesome to do all of that stuff and to have a van and then have a little awning that we could roll out. Dude, and then we could put out like chairs. Yeah, exactly. And a grill. Oh my, that is so sick. See, that is uh, like. What would you do without me? 
Okay, so <laughs> awning comes. Okay, doors are. You're open. like a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, let's just talk more about this van because this thing is sick. <laughs> it is sick. So the way the layout's going to be is, uh, if you know about a normal Ford van, it's got the two doors that open on the side, right? Now, as soon as those open, you go in, and there's a. What I've done is taken a bench along that back wall, so I built a little frame for a bench. So you look, you look straight into the van. There's a bench, and then there's the two big windows behind there. So the one, the 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 window that's parallel to that, I'm gonna cover up. Yeah. So that whole wall is just gonna be uh, birch. So I did influence you somehow. Yeah. Because your <clears throat> plan was not to cover up the windows, but so, I was like, I think that these windows should be covered. So yeah, I'm gonna okay, cover cool. those. I'm gonna cover those side windows, and then the two little ones in the back, those are gonna get covered too. Oh really? And then the and then the very back, the ones on the doors, mm-hmm. I'm gonna frost those. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. I wish that you could somehow make those like go to the dump or something and find windows in the back that would open because those back windows one of the worst part parts of touring in the very back is that those two windows won't open and naveen and i used to have a bunk that was the the back bench and we would both be sleeping up there at night like in the middle of the summer with no ventilation whatsoever through the back and it it's awful. All right, we'll figure something out. Back yeah, there. we should figure, figure something, something out. With maybe that. I mean, maybe if we're gonna have power, we could get a little AC unit back there. Seriously. Yeah, you up. know, another <clears> thing <throat> that I've thought of is that a lot of those vans that I see, they have like a, a sun, a ceiling I light. I know, Mike. That our would be our cool. friend Mike built a van, and he lives with, in it with a sprinter. Yeah. So his is a little taller. Yeah. And we did yeah. kind of talk about extending the roof because we have this really awesome resource, which is that your brother is an insanely skilled metal worker. Right. And we could do that. So we could do we that. We could do that, but could it do that. would probably cost us a lot of money. I know. I'm trying to just do this. I've, I've only spent 350 bucks so far. I wonder how so. much extending the roof actually would cost us. Well, he started laughing when I threw out the number of 1500 <laughs> So That's not a good sign. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, you go, you look in. Um, the wood, the floor is going to be hardwood floor. It's going to mm-hmm. be sick. There's a bench directly on that one with windows. They let the natural light in because I like it with natural light. It's nice in there. <clears throat> that w- the wall to the to the, it would be your left. That's all covered. There's a bed in the back. Underneath the bed, it's going to be wide open, so we can do. I was thinking we can put homies under there for when we go on tour. We can put a bed, and you can do, sleep at least one more person. Oh, yeah. So that's four spots to sleep right mm-hmm. off the bat. Me and you up on the bunk. At least one person. That would be a baller spot underneath. And then on the bench. Mm-hmm. So that's four. And then you could put, have a homie bed that pulls out underneath the other bench. Yeah. So now we're sleeping five people. Easy. And then, uh, so on that wall, I think I'm going to put entertainment center, dude. TV. And then there's going to be the nice stream lights at the top. It'll be sick. And now we're going to have a garden, apparently. A garden, with the with the awning. And oh, shit. the awning, yeah. <laughs> Maybe some astroturf. We roll it out. <laughs> that would be sick. That'd be super white trash. Yeah, yeah. Which is what we've been speaking into of lately. white what trash. What we've been into lately. Speaking of white trash, who has seen Tiger King out well, that, there? Well, that comes. That brings us to a question over oh. here from Drew. Drew, what's he got to Drew say? Drew from Minneapolis is asking, uh, "What are some shows we've been watching during this?" quarantine i think he's assuming that people have a lot of extra time yeah right now. well so we watched tiger king once and our minds were blown i think we started watching tiger king the minute it came out it just like came up on our netflix yeah like i, I don't even think you put it on i think it just came on it accidentally came on and we were I was like, like halfway through the show and i was like how did this happen how did it come on yeah incredible <laughs> uh to be fair, I had had a little uh, medical marijuana edible, so I don't. It might have. I might have put it on, but uh. Uh oh. <laughs> perfectly legal. Perfectly legal here in California, and an essential business during the coronavirus. So. That's hilarious. So all the weed shops are open still. They're open. Well, that is yeah. essential for some. I've only had delivery, <laughs> but your your uh, mom was at a place and said that you have to stand outside now. 
you have to stand outside yeah, of the yeah. shop and they just yeah. hand you a menu. Oh, uh, some and you I, order outside. The used tool shop, Drew's used tools. <laughs> I'm a, a fucking huge fan of this place. Yeah, but I, that's what they were doing. Oh really? Oh, what do you want? And oh then really? He went and got me. I was like, yeah, I'm looking for a circular saw, and he just like pushed a cart out with a bunch of them on there. Whoa! And he's like, yeah, pick one. That's fascinating. Yeah. It's weird times. But yeah, so we've been watching uh, The Tiger King, which if you have, I'm assuming that because it's Wednesday and everyone has been talking about it since the day it came out that you guys have heard about Tiger King. There's no way you haven't heard about it. There's no way you haven't. And if you have, if you somehow have not, you need to get Netflix, like subscribe to Netflix if you don't have it strictly for this show. (laughs) Or just go look up Joe Exotic music yeah. videos on youtube because <clears throat> this man is a country singer too on top of so being an stuff. owner of big cats so, so this stuff. movie is about big cat owners and we're talking tigers <clears throat> lions yeah. bears it's crazy. oh my it's yeah. like it's insane. and so in america there are more tigers in captivity in america than there are in the wild yeah. in the entire world so this man Pretty shocking it's insane. Yeah. So this documentary is about a lot of big cat owners in the States and just like mm-hmm. all of the illegal shit that they do. And basically all of these like side things that they do that are illegal that don't have anything to do with big cats at all while simultaneously fight. There, there are two big cat owners specifically that like f- quarrel with each other yeah. all the time. Classic feud. A classic feud. But man, oh man, is it entertaining. It's like the... Uh, I mean, that's a... You can't stop watching that one once what are it the, starts. What are their names? It's like the... What's that? The two Southern families that fought. The Hatfield and McCoys. Mm. Hatfield and McCoys. You don't know about... Not yeah. ringing a bell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, hmm, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know of that. Totally. I know about totally. that. Totally. But I mean, you gotta watch it. It's just... I love watching... Fuck, like. Man. I don't know if you're into things like the wild and wonderful whites of West Virginia, uh, any meth documentary on HBO, which it's the best. We watched a meth documentary on HBO last night, but then we automa- we immediately went back for our second viewing of Joe Exotic. I, had to have, I, the Tiger I was like, Jenny, let's watch it again, dude. I f- we're getting filled in with a lot yeah. of things. Like the first time around, we didn't realize that they actually told you from the beginning that they he was in jail. They divulge a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I thought that it was just all... Like right off the bat, first five minutes. Yeah, so we weren't so. paying very much attention the first time through to the first five minutes, but... Yeah. Of course, you don't know why any of this stuff's happening. Yeah. Which we won't divulge, Cheney. <laughs> Cheney is... A spoiler, a living spoiler. I alert. feel like I've gotten a lot better about it. I whenever anybody's talking about a show or a movie and you're there, I'm just like, I'm a nervous <laughs> wreck. I'm like, she's gonna blow it. She's gonna just say how it ends right now. <laughs> I I'm guilty of doing that. A like Game of Thrones thing. We won't yeah. go into it right now. Yeah, I told people what happened to a certain asshole prince. <laughs> Because my mom had read the books and yeah. told Cheney what happens, and this hadn't even happened on the show yet. Yeah. And we're standing with a huge group of people, and Cheney's like, oh, yeah, when da-da-da dies? And everyone was like, oh, my God, I can't <laughs> believe you just said that. I don't even think I was religiously watching Game of Thrones at that time, <clears throat> either. Yeah. So it might just been a case of, like, you didn't really know that it was out. Yeah. 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 Since then, it's kept me on my toes. What can you do? Man. What can you do? Toes. So yeah, we've been doing that. I mean, we have been watching more Netflix than usual. We were I'll watching. Say. We watched a lot of Curb Your Enthusiasm. The new. We've been watching a little bit of that new season. Hilarious, by the way. Uh, really funny. Always hilarious. Yeah. Larry David, that's comedic genius at at its purest form. Because you can tell he just does it for fun. Yeah. He doesn't need money. So he, and he said that before because Curb had like eight years off. Yeah. Something crazy. Like yeah. That. I mean, the man is... And he was like, I just couldn't think of anything, so we didn't do anything. Which is good to him. To yeah. not, Props to him for All doing that. that. And he that. came back, and the the series took off like it had never been it's gone. Hilarious. Except that Cheryl has a lot of plastic <clears throat> surgery now. Yeah, that's crazy. She looks good, though. Yeah. She looks really good. And the the production of the show is, like, too good now. 
it which is. is weird it's like I've super got, hd i've gotten used to it though i mean <laughs> yeah, you have to too. imagine like when curb ended shows didn't really look that good yeah i know i prefer that i prefer yeah. like the peep show look yeah there are some things that i prefer peep show is a good one too if you guys are trapped and you, you don't want to do anything productive I mean, Peep Watch Show's Peep Show. also comedic genius. Love me some Peep Show. That's, That's an amazing show. Shows. Yeah, I'll <laughs> say that as well. All three of the things that we've named have been some of my favorite shows. If you haven't seen Wild and Wonderful Whites of West Virginia, that for that. me is a yearly watch since the first time we watched it. <clears throat> Any yeah. like Moonshiner <clears throat> documentary. From I know. I was thinking of that last night. Yeah. I was thinking we should watch. What was his name? Cotton. Yeah. What is that his name? Evan Brewer showed us this amazing documentary about a man who is a moonshiner in Appalachia. I might be able to look it up. I think I've got the internet here. I love those kind of documentaries, though. Just like hill people of Appalachia duck type stuff. Dude, this is sick. I've got the internet. Well, usually That's I don't like have the internet the first time because that, uh, my Wi-Fi card is broken, but I have, I was using my phone to tether and, oh, it's, nice. and it's plugged in because mm-hmm. of the camera. So now I'm like using it. Oh, that's cool. You're like Jamie and Naveen wrapped into Dude, one. Dude, now I can do some Jamie stuff. So did you find the Moonshiner documentary? Moonshine. Uh, what were you searching over there? If you were? I don't know. I was just searching Moonshine and then a bunch of brands <laughs> came up. Okay. 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 All right. Hold on a sec. Popcorn. Popcorn. Oh, Popcorn. Dude, That's popcorn. his name. Popcorn Sutton. This dude. Popcorn fucking Sutton. This man drives like a 1943 pickup truck. Okay, so wait. Now we can play... Oh, this is kind of a game changer. I can play clips from shows. But we'll get like banned, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I don't think that our show's hitting enough people. Yeah, they're like, oh, 50 people <laughs> yeah. might see Popcorn Sutton. <laughs> Oh, we're we're promoting. We're just yeah. out here DIY, dude. Totally. So that's a good one to watch. Popcorn Sutton. That's yeah, on that's YouTube. Great. You just check that out. And of course, you should go watch our new uh, music visualizer, official song visualizer. Yeah, we we've uh, we're really stoked on how everybody's been giving us good feedback about this song and everything. Yeah, Very it seems good, like people uh, like it. A lot of thumbs ups happening. A lot of thumbs ups. We only had <coughs> one thumbs down for a good, like, three days. I know. It was pretty crazy. It's cool. And shout out to Revolver. I mean, yeah, Revolver, Revolver Magazine up. named our song as one of the six best songs last week next to, you've heard of them, Lamb of God, Acacia Strain, Converge, Gouge Away, and I think Mutoid Man was the other one, uh, which is a real high honor. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's crazy. It was like... All these huge bands and then our and songs. Then, and then yes, yeah, I'll take I couldn't it. believe yeah. it. Yeah, so that so was really thank cool. You to Revolver <clears throat> for and then that. of course the change in the band, I guess we'll call it, uh, has been going over well. Yeah, the, I think the so. The band is just now me and Chaney. I've it's, gotten a lot of messages like, "Fucking finally!" Wow, which is weird. Yeah, so people have been supportive. Yeah, and we appreciate that for real it's, because I know that change is always weird yeah and i think i don't know if you felt this way but i was a little <laughs> apprehensive of or i was a little worried about how people i don't know if worried is the right thing but i was just a little curious as to how it would go over <clears throat> because you know yeah i think that especially losing evan evan had so, a lot to wait, do with uh, last week did we talk about the lineup change i don't uh, think maybe we, we briefly touched on it i don't yeah. know so maybe we should just reiterate yeah so do you wanna so entheos is now i don't know if who knows this or not but we're it's just a two-piece it's me and cheney and mm-hmm. the song that we put out last week it's called remember you are dust i played guitar bass and drums and it's the first song like that from us and it's also the first song that we fully produced on our own with i mean from writing to all the way to up to master mm-hmm. we did it all in our house in our little bedroom studio yeah and earlier in the year we said that we wanted to crank out a lot of material this year yeah 
And basically what happened with, obviously, Evan, he started with his family and he just couldn't commit to touring all yeah, the time. Yeah, he has and a baby. The touring thing is obviously a big deal with the, our band. And so if you're, if you have um, stuff that's going to hold you back from being able to tour, mm -hmm. that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, and that's essentially what happened with Travis. He's committed now to another band and uh, he was able to tour up to the end of the year, but we sort of creatively wanted to go in a different direction with the project and we thought it would be better to kind of get a head start on how things are going to be moving forward yeah rather than wait and that's yes. that that was the decision and that's what we're doing now and honestly it's enabled us to make a song from nothing and put it out in two weeks yeah because it's just us it's the process is totally streamlined, you know? Yeah. And for better or for worse, you know, that's for you guys to decide. But right, yeah. We're having a great time we are. doing it. And live, we have some people lined up that will travel live. Yeah, we're us. not going to be playing as a two-piece live. We will have a bass player and a guitar player live. Yeah. But, you know, it's been a weird time. <clears throat> I'll be completely honest. For the last, like, two years, it really started when Evan, when his daughter was born and he decided that he couldn't tour with us anymore. Evan had a, a large part to do with our band. Yeah. Evan wrote material. Evan's voice is very apparent in the music and he just, plays on. And the just style his style. Was Oh, it's like death metal with like crazy slap bass. Yeah, yeah and he's sound. <clears throat> in my mind, Evan in our band is irreplaceable. Yeah, uh, and that's just how it is. And this whole thing kind of started with us like looking for a new bass player, yeah, someone to move forward in <clears throat> Evan's position. And honestly, anything that we really heard over our demos that wasn't Evan just didn't sit. Yeah. correctly and and i think that comes from you and evan have played together for so long so fucking long he was in animosity you worked on his second solo album evan has been a part of this band since day one and totally and when with with that happening we kind of started to realize okay maybe naveen should be the person to play bass on these songs yeah i mean i might not be the best bass player ever but i like get the idea of what to go for yeah you know and i think like cheney was saying if we heard had someone else do a demo or whatever it just didn't sit right you know yeah. it's just and that's what i think is the, one of the reasons why people are kind of resonating with the new song you mm -hmm. know we've had a lot of comments people saying it's the best song that we've ever done blah 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 yeah i don't know if they're just trying to be nice or not but for whatever reason I think the song f has a good flow to it. I agree. Because it's just that one creative, well, I guess double, you know, me yeah. and you, just boom, creative vision. Well, well, you know, one thing with our band, and this is actually kind of interesting because we didn't even mean to go here, but Shelton asked a question about this that we can move into in a, a second, and it's that Evan and his bass, that's such a unique and distinct voice, especially in the way that he's written for our band that if you try to get someone in there who sounds exactly like or, or who is highly influenced by Evan yeah. <clears throat> it comes off like it just doesn't really work and because I don't it just sounds like a cheaper version yeah and that's what we like Evan and I were actually talking a couple of weeks ago and he was like you know what man if you know when you get someone else don't get someone who's trying to be like me yeah. And that's honestly what inspired me for myself to just do it because I know that I can come up with cool stuff. You know? Yeah. And that's why I was thinking, huh, I'll just do something that's And I think that I think that some the the overall style is captured like having cool ripping bass tone and it being kind of more f sent forefront. Totally. But yeah, I'm not trying to be Evan. Which Whereas I if I was an Evan like disciple, I'd be, tr you know, trying to do the licks everywhere. And music's just one of those things where it's uh, subtle. Yeah, and I do think that in the case of you know someone 
coming in and filling Evan's parts. If you get a young guy, Evan is a, a well-known bass player. He's a very, he's my favorite bass player, period. Like, that's my favorite bass player. And to step into a position where you know that how big, how much you and I love Evan and his playing, and yeah. I think that'd be weird for another guy to try to step in and have that, like, thought all the time of, is this going to sound like Evan or is, like, is that type of thing. Right. And I, I think it feels more natural <clears throat> to have you doing it, and it's not that feeling. Because I'm not worried, yeah, about that. Yeah. I'm not, like, I don't have anything to prove as a bass player, yeah. you know? Yeah. Whereas other, someone else could come in and go, oh, I'm filling these big shoes, I gotta do this and that and the other thing. Whereas I'm just thinking, like, let me make this song sound sick. Yeah, totally. Because you know? I don't care, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be a bass player. Yeah. I don't care if anybody thinks I'm good at bass. Yeah. You know? And that can go for, that can go for every instrument outside of what we're talking about absolutely you know you might it's not always uh necessary to do to prove yourself on every track you know yeah, totally and <clears throat> that's something to think about when you're like stepping into the shoes of a new band for instance when you went and tracked white chapel drums you weren't thinking how can i sound like uh, ben, yeah. how can I make these drums sound like Ben? It was they picked you, or exactly. if you're if you're a person going to fill in for another person in a band, chances are they picked you because they like your style and your yeah. flavor. Because if you're trying to be someone else, you're never going to sound like them, even if you're way better than them. Exactly, it always comes off inauthentic, and I don't <laughs> think it. It just doesn't really work. Yeah, a lot of the time, at least it didn't for us. Yeah, so. and. Uh, so. so I'm really proud of the new track. Yeah, and all that to say that's where we're at. With, yeah. And we had a really good time recording the track at home. It fl it was flowing. You know, we were having a a grand old time. Yeah. And I want to try to do a new song every month. Yeah, I would like the, to do that too. That's what we're shooting for. I think we can make it happen because we've already done the one track. We're now, it's still a week away until we get to April. Yeah. So I think we could totally do it. Me too. I would like to do that for a while while we are simultaneously working on yeah. an actual release. A bigger release. And I would assume that that will probably come out next early next year sometime, but I we'll just, see. Yeah, I think right now, the more stuff we put out, the better. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. And f yesterday I was doing an interview question, or I was uh, doing an interview, and one of the questions on there was, uh, what's your dream label to be signed to? <clears throat> and I thought about it for a few seconds and- just I'm just having so much fun being able to put music out on a whim that it's going to be hard for me to want to sign to another label <clears throat> at least in the any time in the near future just because no thanks it's just working so well for us to like get a song done and then be able to I release know. it that night or the next day and it's it's very freeing and I think the way that you and I are we're sort of uh, like control controlling type people uh, mm -hmm. we sort of want to have a hand in every aspect yeah right absolutely and i think if you're that type of person labels can be annoying because they're right. going to handle your product if we want to call it that mm -hmm. differently than you would or not or not care as much or whatever that that is a thing and it's not even that they don't care as much. It's that no one is ever going to care as much as we do. No one is ever going to. And that's not anyone's fault. That is just a product of when you work so on something and put your heart and soul into it, you're going to care about it a lot more. And you're going to care about the way it gets out and all of that stuff a lot more than anyone else who you're like putting on the job because they work at the label you're signed yeah. to. Or and they have other people to deal with Ex and all that yeah. stuff. And that's You're great. I I don't have anything against that. But me either at all. For our life and the what we want to do, it's been already putting this one song out has been really fucking cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited. It's just the start. And I really am excited to doing more. Yeah. And that's not to say that we wouldn't sign to a label in the future. It would all, everything is dependent upon what's presented, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, you want to get into a question? What time is it? Uh, it's 10. Oh, so all right. Let's one do one question. question. Also, let's shout out Pangea. Yeah. I put out the feelers last week. I was like, hey, if anybody wants to send us merch to wear, 
You know, you might get tired of me wearing the same dying fetus shirt in every fucking episode. So, uh, offer still stands. If yeah. you guys want us to rep some merch, shout out to Pangea. Hit us for up a... at Inthe- uh, not Entheos, at uh, Copper Crab Podcast at Gmail. That's right. I don't or check our... it. I don't check it, obviously. I check it. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, I'll be the one dealing with you if you message us or anything on the internet. But uh, yeah, so check out Pangea. Actually, fun fact, the man, Carol Asia, who's done all of our art, Comatech, up to this point, all of our uh, album art did the Pangea cover as yeah, well. very cool. Yes. So, uh, well, he didn't do the new cover. Mm, right. Yeah, he yeah. didn't do the single art, but he did all of our full album yeah. art. So, yeah. Uh, appreciate the shirts. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Fuck yeah, that Something was very to keep quick. Ploy to get free shirts. <laughs> um, all right, we can ask two of these questions because we kind of touched on the <laughs> and, base and thing. Shout out to Direct Sound Headphones for supplying them sick headphones and oh, recess coffee. Recess coffee and Moon Juice CBD by Jade Rabbit. Those are the people who have been supporters. Thanks, y'all. And fuck uh, the rest of the companies who don't support fuck us. Fuck all y'all. Okay, Shelton's got a couple of questions. Um, here's we the first one. one didn't we? Well, we kind of did. Do you think metal bands don't utilize their bass player or rhythmic side very well in their music? The reason being is I've noticed bands consistently drowning out the bass with lower string guitars. I don't mind that, but I want to hear the bass in the mix. Naveen, since you've produced records, I want to hear your opinion in the matter. On the matter. All right. Well, I would say. Uh, is that is that that's getting good to go, right? Yeah. I get both sides because something that you will notice if you're producing music is there's only so much space for um, you to pay attention to, mm-hmm. right? If there's really demanding bass to listen to, and then you also got like vocals happening at the same time. Like, the bass and the vocals are both in the center, right? They're not panned, where, like, guitars are, you're going to have a left and a right. Drums are, like, a stereo thing. Bass and vocals, they hit right in the center together. So, this is something that I've noticed, and it's it's even with metal vocals, the bass, like, that clanky bass and vocals, it can really occupy the same range. So, it's hard to, it gets in the way sometimes, if you're doing vocals and I think even us we've we haven't always done a good job of of saying what's the focus here is it the bass or is it the vocals in certain parts yeah and so I think <clears throat> most of the time people hear something like that and they just go oh this is like clashing with the vocals I'm gonna I'm gonna dial it back the you know the mid-range so it's not as audible or um, you know they'll make it sit more in the back and then especially because you have distorted guitar as well. So you're trying to balance all that out. So I've found that it's just important to have, to know what thing is supposed to be in the forefront. Yeah. You know, and I think with metal, a lot of the times we want the vocals to be nice and in the forefront. So it's hard to get it with the bass, but just pick a couple parts. The bass is going to shine here. Vocals are going to go back here, right? That's what I'm trying to get better at. I'm trying to get better at, what's the focus in each part instead of just having everything crazy all the time yeah i think it makes for better songwriting that way it really does and it's more impactful yeah when it when the <laughs> when the instrument or the certain specific thing does go all out you recognize it more yeah, it's like whoa that's crazy yeah. Let's look at that you know mm-hmm. so i think it's hard to balance all those things and most people just don't try that want to try to do that and then another thing is um, if the bass is, if you want the bass to, to just be a more of a low end in your mix or in your song, then the notes are going to be so low that it's going to be hard to make anything that's going to stand out. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the time you just want that low end out of there. So that that's the job it's doing for that particular application. That's what I'd say. Yeah. That's actually pretty informative. Yeah, I mean, Fascinating. The, the thing that you start to realize is when you are making music, and I realized this when I was making electronic music a lot, is that a lot of the time the material, like what's being played, ha- has a lot to do with 
how the mix it's going to sound like there's no separation between the material and the mix in my opinion yeah you know like if you make music like part of the reason why periphery sounds so great they make music that's gonna sound really good yeah they really because do. it's not it's it's with that in mind you know so and all of those things like when you <clears throat> are uh, people who are good songwriters i think have a good grasp on all of that stuff yeah um and that's why there might not be as much like shedding right as as people would want does that make sense like yeah because it's you gotta wonder like is this a drum solo or is it a metal song yeah know? and try to f- balance it out and it's something that we've struggled with in our band totally. and uh, that's what we're trying to get a lot better at is just making the decision of what is the important a- aspect of this specific yeah. part exactly and i think with the new song we've got get, like better at doing all the stuff that i think entheos is cool for and doing it in a way that's more slick and more pot like tailored here's the idea it's mm-hmm. a little more easy to it's i think i think it's easier to grasp because it's delivered in a better way totally that's what i think so you got to think of that when you're working with not just bass but any instrument like that's goes for everything all right next question something to something to think about Shelton, his other question. This is the week of Shelton's questions. Yep. What's up, Shelton, man? Hope you're doing well. Getting through this corona, all right? My question refers to having fun and metal and listening to interesting but fun records. I think the metal community is so obsessed with image. To a point, I think we're worse than K-pop fans. I honestly have no experience with K-pop fans or how they... <laughs> I don't know anything about... So regardless, I still love the community and I love the music. I just think the community is so much shit to bands like Baby Metal, Poppy, Sleep Token, and other bands of that variety for being different and having a different image. <clears throat> I understand that image is a part of metal. I don't really care about that as long as the music is good. So my question for you is do you think image and metal ruins the fun factor of it? Well... What do you think, Naveen? I think uh, the unfortunate truth is that image, it, people really care. About, image is king. You know, like most people hear with their eyes, you know? Yeah. And honestly. And that's something that we've had to s- sort of deal with and like address. Yeah. Like what, unfortunately, because I, I think that this is unfortunate. I don't know if it really is or not, but people judge you and your band on how you look they you know because you could totally do look a certain way but play a totally different style of music but people will consider that style to however you look exactly they do it all the time yeah and association so it matters Uh, and and specifically the stuff that you named baby metal poppy and i'm fairly familiar with sleep token i've heard some songs all the reason that these this stuff is considered metal or in the metal field is 100% 100% based on image. <clears throat> Baby metal is kind of metal, for sure. But I think that a lot of the reason that, that these people have found popularity, and this is not selling their music short in any way, but something that has made them uh, get more attention is the image itself. And I think that, to be honest with you, I don't really see Sleep Token getting a hard time in the metal community. Maybe Poppy, but probably the reason that you don't see them fitting in as much is because if you listen to the music on a music basis is poppy really metal i mean poppy has some some metal parts is sleep token really metal i don't yeah. uh, it's it doesn't if i heard it and i didn't know the image associated with it i don't know that i would consider it to be metal yeah. most people don't turn to metal to listen to stuff that's like metal that's pop right with metal influence they want to listen to heavy metal and if there's someone who's turned off by these bands i would assume that it's more because they've um assumed the metal image but they aren't really very metal upon hearing them yeah so that's like the reason why you might consider those 
to be metal at all is just strictly because of the image. That's yeah. yeah. So it matters, you know, and uh, that's something that we've been sort of trying to um, tie in as well, right? Yeah. Have a cool image or whatever. I mean, it sounds corny, but it's just true. It's it, just it true. It is true. Like, you judge bands by how they look. It's that's the case. Yeah, I think that people like to pass it off as being like, oh my God, that's so fucking lame that you have to... But, dude, if you go and see a band on stage, it's like, it does look a little disheveled if a band... If everyone is in, like, tech death shorts and shirts. It looks a little disheveled. but I mean, that's a look for a tech death band. Yeah. And my friend, Nick, he has... A band, they're like old school death metal kind of stuff, and he's, you know, he would he would say to me like, yeah, I would go hand people flyers for my show that was happening this weekend to people who looked metal, right? Mm -hmm. I'd see like a guy in the record store with a with a metal vest or whatever, and it's like, yeah, he was wearing like a he was just wearing normal clothes, and he's like, yeah, I would hand them a flyer, and they and I could tell they think that I'm like they don't think anything of my band. Even though it's like, dude, this is actually old school death metal. Like you'd be into it, but yeah. since I don't look the part, they don't buy it. Totally. You know? And it's that's just an unfortunate reality. It really is. I mean, I don't think that anyone wants it to be that. Like when you're a kid, you and you're getting into metal, I feel like you're like, fuck image, fuck all that. <laughs> yeah. But you grow up and you realize it. It. It matters. It does kind of matter. I mean, there are a lot of bands I can think of of off the top of my head who their image makes their band more appealing. I mean, yeah. would as many people be into Ghost if Ghost didn't have the image that Ghost has? Definitely not. But they probably wouldn't have as many haters, but <clears throat> newsflash, if people don't hate your band, you're not as big as you want to be. Yeah. People have to hate your band. That's just a part of the whole thing. Yeah, we don't have that many haters. So <laughs> I, don't know. I know, we need to do something. But, uh, but you know, it's like... Anyway. And honestly, I have nothing against any of these bands. I think Poppy is awesome uh baby metal yeah i like this stuff it's just image the, the only reason i know about baby metal is because their album came out the same day as uh infinite nothing yeah it did and that annoyed me because <laughs> they should they were definitely at the everyone was like it. posting about baby metal and, <laughs> us, and i was like damn it <laughs> baby metal is pretty sick though i mean man when it comes down to it ev- Everything is going to get hated on and everything is going to get liked. And that's just the way it is, man. It's the way it is. You that expect it. That is the it. way it goes. Well, we're going to have to wrap for today. We got to go about our busy days. <sighs> yep. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Have a good week, you guys. Find a new hobby. Get Do something cool. Get through this corona bullshit. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks Much for hanging fun. out with us. <laughs>